Donald Trump is God's judgment on the United States for not being good enough citizens, and the only answer is to be better citizens. We know Donald Trump is erratic, he's unpopular, and to many, he's offensive. But is he a threat to democracy itself? David Frum thinks so. At the one-year mark of Trump's presidency, the conservative commentator believes the U.S. president is changing America, and he wants citizens to pay attention. It's been a year of unpredictability and chaos within the White House. I don't think anybody has done what we've been able to do. An American presidency unlike any other, at times bombastic. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. At times unthinkable. I am the least racist person you have ever interviewed. David Frum understands Washington politics from the inside. He was a speechwriter for George W. Bush and famously coined one of that president's most remembered lines. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil. Today, Frum is the senior editor of The Atlantic. He's a well-connected conservative and Republican, and he was part of CBC News' coverage on America Votes. Even then, he was dismayed at the idea of a Trump presidency. Trump. This administration is going to be a series of crises. One year in, Frum remains highly critical of Donald Trump's political rise. His new book, Trumpocracy, suggests Trump is corrupting the American Republic and is damaging its democracy. I sat down with David Frum earlier today in our national studio. Good to see you. Hello, Rosemary. Uh, one of the things you write in the book is the thing to fear from the Trump presidency is not the bold overthrow of the Constitution, but the stealthy paralysis of governance. I'm wondering how this uh, debacle of, of a, a shutdown, which hasn't happened in 10 years, I think, right? 13 years. Um, how that speaks to the Trump presidency, what that tells us about what you're talking about there. Uh, the, the shutdown was a deliberate trap uh, that Republicans set for Democrats. Mm -hmm. uh, that. The goal of, of the shutdown was to change the subject. Democrats and Republicans disagree about two important things. One of them is a children's health insurance program, and the other is a form of amnesty for a certain group of people who, who entered yeah. the United States as children and who are present right. illegally. The CHIP program, the health program, is extremely popular. Um, the question about the future of the, this population of people present illegally in the United States, not so popular. Democrats wanted to talk about the health insurance, the, strategy of Trump and the Republicans was to lure them instead into talking about illegal immigration, yeah. and that strategy succeeded. Now, that, this is especially important when you remember that 2018 is going to be an election year, which the Republicans are under a lot of pressure. And in the red states, where there are a lot of vulnerable Republican senators, this is going to be a powerful issue to use against Democrats. Yeah. And that was what um, Trump and the Republicans wanted to happen, and that's what did happen. The fact that he seems very hands-off in all of this, what, what should we understand from that? For everything that is the proper job of the president, all the things the president is supposed to be doing, Trump is a very hands-off president, um, not very hard-working. But he, among the, about those things that the president should not be doing, the president, this president is very active. He is very active on working on his strategy to gain legal impunity, very active managing his business while as president, um, very active in the communication strategy. There's a view that some Trump critics cling to, hopefully, that Donald Trump is such a doofus, mm -hmm. he's just going to collapse of his own weight. And that is really mistaken. He is a much shrewder and wilier person well, than he's and, often given credit for. And you also, in the book, you show how he used the vulnerabilities that exist in the American political system to his advantage. Like what? Well, bullies have an instinctive sense of other people's weaknesses. He found the weak... And, you know, uh, Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio and Jeb Bush and other primary opponents and Hillary Clinton, he found the weak point, the point where you could put pressure um, and separate them from their potential supporters. And he's done the same thing to the American system of government. He's found its weak points and he's exploited them. Is that irreparable damage? Some of the damage that Donald Trump is doing um, can be repaired, but a lot of it cannot be. And even some of the damage that can be repaired will be, will be slow. For example, what Donald Trump is doing to America's alliance system. It was going to, whoever became president in 2017 was going to have a very tough time managing keeping the United States and South Korea on the same page, sure. with North Korea becoming nuclear, with China getting richer and richer and having so much influence. Maintaining that relationship was going to be hard. It gets harder if you say, let's cancel the U.S.-South Korea free trade agreement, uh, let's st start a preemptive war, 
um, and take casualties in South Korea so that we don't suffer them in the United States. Mm. Trump is driving South Korea toward China and North Korea. In the same way, Trump is driving Germany away from the United States by being so cavalier about Russia and about um, maintaining security in Europe. Look, can Canada, I mean, how do you mess up the U.S.-Canada relationship? And yet, I think, I can't remember when Canadians were more apprehensive about the leadership from the United States than, than they are today. That will be hard to repair. And the damaged institutions will be yeah. hard to repair, too. He's compromising the integrity of the Justice Department and the FBI. M the most difficult thing to repair is Trump is just burning down every one of the ethical standards around the presidency that's been erected in the past half century. Right now, Donald Trump is receiving unknown millions of dollars in payments from all around the world, from business partners in the Philippines, in Turkey, United Arab Emirates, India, other places. Nobody knows how much, and nobody knows what he's doing in return. Um, and all of this, it's legal, because no one, it never occurred to anybody to ban so it. try it, yeah. Because who would do it? Yeah. You, you talked about the institutions that he is weakening, threatening. One of them that you point to is the military, yeah. who have had to, in some ways, almost ignore him. Right. Uh, for instance, on the on the trans uh, the transgender uh, act or law that he tried yeah. to put in place that hasn't gone past. What is the danger of that? The military just ignoring uh, the commander in chief. Look, bureaucracies don't like listening to politicians at any time. Yeah. The strongest bureaucracies in Washington are the military, the national and the intelligence services. If they get good reason to um, disregard the president, that can, um, they will do it, and that can become a habit. You know, Do Donald Trump, um, every president gets a president's daily intelligence mm -hmm. brief, the highest secrets of the United States. It's, a, one, it's the mo one of the most precious documents in the government. And typically, in a normal administration, three or four people will have access to that. The president, the vice president, probably the chief of staff, probably the national security advisor, possibly one or two other people. Trump has made that available to 14 people. There's, there's no such thing as a secret that can be kept by 14 people. So my guess, I, I'm not one of the 14, so I don't know, <laughs> but my guess is that the quality of the intelligence in that document is a lot less than it was under Donald Trump's Because they know he's sharing it. They know he's sharing it with too many people. Uh, and they remember that he blurted one of the most important secrets of the United States to the Russian ambassador just to, to show off. Yes. So how much does Donald Trump really know about what the military is doing? How much does the military know? And by the way, how much is the military taking orders mm -hmm. from President Trump? I mean, if he has some brainwave, um, theoretically, the president has the power to call over that nuclear briefcase at any time and attack anyone for any reason. But would they really listen? It's a degradation, really, of the institution. You know, when Donald Trump was elected, a lot of people said, that's it, this is like the Nazi seizure of power. And the thing I tried to argue for a year is what Trump is to American democracy is not a heart attack, he's gum disease. He's a slow, festering degradation. You can die from gum disease if the infection gets into your body, but you don't fall over the first moment you get it. Well, that leads me to, to your last chapter, which to me was quite surprising, because I'm not sure I knew that you were such a hopeful person, but it was sort of all the things that Donald Trump has brought to bear, brought to light, and, and maybe improved, and the biggest one, of course, is, is civil action. Yeah. And we saw that even yesterday with the Women's March. People trying to be better citizens. Yes, I, I often joke, John, Donald Trump is God's judgment on the United States for not being good enough citizens, and the only answer is to be better citizens. The thing that is so inspiring about these women's marches is that these are orderly. There's, there, there, there's no street theater, there, no one's burning the flag, they're obeying the police, they're staying on the, they're, they're going where they're supposed to go, there are no arrests. That, that is, they are saying, what Donald Trump with all of these protests wants to do is to say, I'm America and you're outside. And that's what he tried to do to the football players. This president who was brought to power very largely by the help of a hostile foreign intelligence agency, he wants to claim to be America. And the more law-abiding and orderly these protesters are, the more they say, no, we are America. You are the alien. Um, I think that is a sign of hope. It was good. I learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you.